Okay, here's the rest of the band. It's my cat, Lydell. What's up, man? <laughs> we have rehearsal. Our rehearsal's at Thursday, uh, on Thursday, 7 o'clock. So he's right on time like he usually is. Here's his son here, his mentor, carrying his books, his armor bearer. He got no books of lessons. And, <laughs> and here we have my man, Todd Wilson, dynamic drumming. He's responsible for the dynamic drumming. One, two, and three. And Chris Coleman, DVDs, uh, drumworksinc.com. Uh, he was the drummer for Faith World for the last, what, 10 years with Clint Brown? 11 years. Get it straight for Clint Brown. And I don't know how many people have been asking me, how in the world can you play to a click track, my brother? So I did the first video about playing to the click track, and all of the drummers kept asking me, how in the world do you play with a click track? So tell me a little bit, what makes it so difficult to play with a click track? First of all, what is a click track? Well, a click track is basically something that a drummer would use in the band, whether it's a metronome or something like everybody know the MPC 2000, um, to keep timing in the band. It locks everything and gels everything together. And basically that's what it is. Um, what makes it so difficult? Uh, I think what makes it difficult is drummers, if you don't practice with it, yeah. it will be difficult. Okay. But if you just make it just, um, just a mandated thing for yourself to practice with it all the time, play with it all the time, it'll be like second nature because I've been doing it. I've been playing with this for maybe um, 10, 15 years. Okay. And playing with a metronome for longer because I, oh. I, I, I was always taught to play with some type of timing. Okay. All right, cool. And so when you're making a click track, what, from an engineering perspective, and even something I need to know, what do I need to leave off of? What are, what it, what's really the crux of the click track? Like, what do you want to focus on the cymbals, tambourines, less of the bass, less of the kick? What's the, what's the, give me, give me some examples. Um, I think that's all to the discretion of the person who's making the track. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to come from my perspective. When I make a track, um, of course, I need to know what the song, what type of song it is. If it's a praise song, it's a worship song, fast, low, medium, you need all that. Once you figure that out, um, then you'll know what type of instruments to use if you want to play on top of a track that has like heavy kick, snare, hi-hat, auxiliaries, that you can be playing on top of it. Then you can do something where it's like I call a skeleton track where it's no kick, um, but you have like, you know, uh, uh, shakers, right? Uh, you know, tambourines, snaps, claps, right? No kick. So it's like it's just a filler. Got gotcha. you. It's a timekeeper. You know what I mean? It just fills up the music better. All right, give me an example, man. I know you got some stuff over there. Yeah, I got one track here I, I had um, set up. Uh, I'm going to actually play with this one, but I'm going to let you hear um, what I was talking about as far as having a track that's like really just hard in your face. Oh, yeah, so, so that's what the hard what thing mean. is, exactly. You probably heard it one time on uh, Jamal's website, so when you hear it, you might recognize it. Oh, I know what you're talking about with your dude, with your boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me find I'm sorry I wasn't ready for this. Nah, you good. Um, you can edit that out. Here we go. That's a real hard track. You got a hard kick, snare, hi-hat other things going on basically when i play with this track i'm playing basically on top of so you have to play exactly what that kick does right you you when i made this track i made it to basically when i do play the song i'm going to play the same kick pattern but not saying that you have to stay married to it. okay you can be you can be um kind of you know just just use your own discretion on how you want to do it but don't be in the way of the kick and don't be in the way of the music Okay. You know, that sounds confusing, but <laughs> I can show you what I mean. All right, cool. Um, I'll show you real quick. On this. But all right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on for a sec. Now, when you doing the rolls, man, how do you not get off beat? That's where most of the drummers miss it. They they cool with playing straight, 
But when you did all those roles and everything, that's when they lose it. Right. And, um, well, again, practice made perfect. Yeah. I play with this all the time. But a trick that I learned that a lot of drummers have problems with, um, I listen to certain things in it. Okay. It's a, that, that will keep me on beat all the time, whether it's a shaker or a snare. You're always going to hear a high pitch sound. That's what I listen to a lot. So, for instance, um, I'm listening to this snare on here. You just came right into a lick, dog. Right. Really, honestly, it don't matter where you start as long as you know where that. Oh. That's your that's your downbeat. So I can do whatever I want. Start. Yeah. Whatever I want. As long as I know where that that one is, I'm good. All right, all right. We're going to come back. We got to do a rehearsal. We got to do our rehearsal now. But we're going to come back after rehearsal with part two, man. Appreciate it, bro. Okay. All right, yep.